Hello and welcome back to a new IELTS Express lesson. Today we'll be analyzing another academic writing task one, particularly maps. Um, in the IELTS writing test, you might be asked to describe a map in task one. And um, this type of question is becoming increasingly popular. And I think that actually this is the easiest one to score high marks. Um, if you're if you're prepared and many students books and even teachers overlook this type of question and it is therefore quite a shock when one comes up but if you are prepared you will probably do better than most of the other students um, first of all I like to tell you that there are different kinds of maps there are three main types of map questions number one you have to describe one map in the present day number two you have to describe two maps, one in the present and one in the future. And number three, you have to describe two maps, one in the past and one in the present. Now, the first kind is very rare, as it only requires you to use the present simple and no comparisons can be made. The second kind occasionally comes up and requires you to use present and future tenses. And this kind of question is normally about the future development of a town or a city. Um, and it requires pretty much the same vocabulary as the other two. The third, however, is the most common and will be the main focus of this lesson. Yeah, the before and after construction. So let's have a look. First, we're going to start with understanding the task. This is a question that you have here. You have the same thing to spend 20 minutes on the task, the word below, which serves as a pointer that you shouldn't be using in the summary. Um, you have to read the, the question very carefully. An island before and after the construction of some tourist facilities. The same question remains. It doesn't matter if it is a map. You have to write about the main points, not every details, summarize, select, main features, comparisons where relevant. And of course, you have to make sure that you meet the minimum number of words, 150 words. Now, in this kind of situation, you are shown two maps, as you can see uh, right now. Uh, and you are asked to select and report the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay. Um, pretty easy until now. And you'll obviously use both present and past tenses to describe the maps and the town or whatever you have, the development. Here we have uh, a map before and after construct, uh, construction of some tourist facilities. So the first one um, we have it is before as we have it here. And the second one is after. Okay. You also have to look very, very carefully and notice, uh, notice all the changes. Again, here, this is color because I wanted to bring a pop of color. Unfortunately, in the actual exam, um, it's going to be black and white. Also pay attention to the legend and to the um, scale. Yeah, you have footpath and vehicle path. Also, what's also very important, as this is a man-made process, you will have to use uh, the passive. This uh, map that we have here is taken from the Cambridge IELTS book 8, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so now that you have analyzed everything and you have uh, written down briefly what you write about, let's get to it. So. To describe two maps, I always advise my students to follow a four paragraph structure. The introduction, which is paraphrasing the question. Paraphrasing mean, uh, means um, using synonyms. In the second paragraph, the overview, where you should be making general statements about the map. And you should describe the maps generally and write about the most noticeable differences between the two maps. and in order for you, for this to get a little, to be a little bit easier, you should and you could ask yourself the following questions to identify the general changes. Is the map more or less residential? Is there more or less countryside? 
Are there more or fewer trees? Were the changes dramatic or negligible? Were there any major infrastructure improvements? And how, may, how, how have the buildings and leisure facilities changed? And this will help you, yeah? And this will help you also identify the main features and uh, write about the details and make comparisons. Now, in the body paragraphs, we're going to have two paragraphs, three or four to four sentences about specific changes that have occurred. And then in the second paragraph, three to four sentences about other specific changes that have occurred. Okay, so don't write a block of text. Um, you can also group the information paragraphs three and four by time or location, again, depending on the question asked. So let's take it bit by bit. Let's have a look at the sample answer and see exactly how uh, I have used this structure. Remember that this sample answer is um, has been written by a candidate aiming at band five or five point five. Okay. So in the introduction, you need to introduce the topic uh, of the visual cue. These maps show a comparison of an island before and after it was renovated to accommodate tourists. And also, another sentence, the changes on the island for the constructions. Yeah, as I said, you need to spend a little bit of time planning your answer before you start. It will help you greatly, trust me. Um, then, if we move to uh, the overview, it starts with the pointer word overall, and then two sentences about uh, the general and the most, in, in general terms, and then most noticeable, significant um, information, main trains, what is very obvious, okay? And again, you need to uh, summarize information. This will also bring you extra points because you are able to synthesize, to summarize the main ideas. Uh, when uh, comparing maps, you can also include the number of changes and again, to introduce and talk about the main types of changes. And here, the second sentence refers to the fact that uh, the changes that have been made didn't affect the natural sources that much. Exactly what I told you uh, at the beginning of the questions that I um, ask you to, I mean, are the changes dramatic or negligible? Here, no, they're not affecting the natural resources that much. So now we cut to the chase. We're moving on to the main body. As I said, three to four sentences. Here, there are two. And we have before the facilities were constructed, so passive voice here, and then have been made. Yeah, passive voice, because again, the process is man-made. Also use the information from the maps to support your ideas. Accommodation, where they sleep, restaurant, where they eat, reception, pier for boats, swimming, and so on. And as I mentioned, passive voice, um, mainly because you need to show exactly how the changes have been made. All right, nothing too complicated so far. So we're moving on to the second paragraph where we're going to bring more details. And this is signpost by the linking word in addition, which sequence the ch uh, changes. And then more details. We also have comparison while. So the footpaths were made passive. Were created again. Uh, and we have a comparison between the two, between the motor tracks or the roads and the footpaths. Of course, this um, sample answer could be easily upgraded in terms of um, vocabulary, but another uh, few tips when dealing with um, with maps, you also have to pay attention to learn the specific vocabulary, topic uh, vocabulary when it comes to maps. First of all, you need to learn how to describe specific changes. 
Um, and when it comes to maps, the ability to describe change is crucial to answering these kind of questions. Um, you also have to know the various buildings and features which will, will be labeled for you. Don't worry about this. And also you need to know how on how to write about how they have changed from the past up until the present day. For example, and um, this is a way for you to recycle the vocabulary. In your speaking test, you may be asked to describe your hometown. And the vocabulary and grammar that you are using in the speaking test can also be very useful when you're talking about maps, if you have buildings and so on and so forth. Um, you also need to be to know the v uh, verbs and the vocabulary related to buildings and how they change. For example, that the buildings can be demolished, knocked down, flattened, replaced, renovated, built, constructed, expanded, reloca relocated. And again, it's all about um, a passive voice. When it comes to um, vegetation, the forest was cut down or was replaced or the trees were cleared to make way for houses. Then um, in terms of leisure facilities, you can also you have some verbs such as open, set up, developed and so on. Then another thing that uh, the maps test the ability to describe general changes. Since this is an IELTS writing task one question, you have to know how to write an overview where you generally talk about the main changes between the two maps. And depending on the question, you can put it differently. For example, you can say over the period, the area witnessed dramatic changes or from a specific period, 1995 to, to 2005, the city center saw spectacular developments, or during the 10 year period, the island was totally transformed, or over the past 20 years, the residential area was totally constructed, and so on and so forth. So, again, in the overview, remember to pick two or three of the most noticeable differences in the map or in the maps and then write a general statement for each. And this is how you write your overview paragraph. The more specific changes should be included in your main body paragraphs. Anything like specific what has been constructed, time frame, so on and so forth. Then it's also very important for you to know how to describe locations. Yeah, you'll be expected to describe where things are on the map, and also to describe where changes have occurred. This is why you should be using to the left, to the right, uh, but you can also use like north, south, east, west. Um, you can actually draw the symbols on the question paper, and this is going to be easier for you. Um, then you have to be able to use prepositions of place, at, in, on, by, beside, to, of, off from again to describe where things are so these are the tips that i recommend when dealing with maps um, personally i think it is very easy because it's very visual you don't have numbers you don't have line graphs you don't have to think oh is it 22 percent is it 23 percent oh do i have to round it up to 25 no it's just a picture and remember, and I don't think I have mentioned in the other tutorials, do not include your personal opinion. That's not important. You don't have to explain why the changes were made. Yeah, you don't have to, I don't know, make assumptions uh, on why things have changed that way. I remember one of my students, uh, I gave this um, map in during a mock exam and he started writing a story about the map that could be inhabited by Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean. So no, you don't have to write stories. You have to write a summary based on what you see. Okay, and that would be all for me. I hope this lesson has helped you and 
Again, if you have any questions, please comment below. I would really appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up if you found this lesson useful and you can also share it with your friends. Um, it was a little bit lengthy lesson, but I, I do hope um, I have included everything to help you out with uh, maps. And um, until next time, don't forget to improve your English. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.